Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now I hope you've had a chance to look at some of my previous videos about microcontroller performance and microcontroller power efficiency. Now in those videos I was doing single core tests even on microcontrollers that had two CPU cores. Now in this video I want to concentrate just on microcontrollers with two CPU cores and see how using that second core changes the power requirements, the energy that's used by those microcontroller boards. So specifically I'm talking about the Raspberry Pi Pico with the RP2040 and the ESP32 development boards with the ESP32 and the ESP32S3. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now before we get into the numbers, just want to mention I'm not going to be talking about how you can efficiently program uh, systems with multi-threading, multitasking, multi-core usage. Hopefully you've seen my previous video about the how you can program both cores using the Arduino. There are other videos I've got planned talking about how you do multi-processing and multi-threading on bigger desktops and on uh, microcontrollers. Now I do have some other videos including one about the difference between multi-threading, multi-processing and so on. But in this video I'm just going to assume that you know why you want to program both cores and you know how to program both cores. So what we're going to do is look at the power uh, changes when you use that set second core. Okay, let's get cracking. Okay, so similar to my other recent uh, microcontroller bo uh, board videos, we're dealing with the Raspberry Pi 2040 processor that's in the Raspberry Pi Pico. It's a dual core M0 Plus uh, processor and two dual core processors from Espressive Systems. That's the ESP32, which got a dual core 10 silica extensor LX6. And then the next generation one is the ESP32 S3, which is a dual core 10 silica extensor LX7. All these boards cost between four and seven dollars, depending on where you buy them, whether you buy them locally, AliExpress, delivery, taxes, all that kind of stuff. And an interesting thing to notice is that all these processes are built using a 40 nanometer process. So the nanometer process in this case shouldn't be a point that makes a difference. They should all be on a level playing field. So I mentioned that all dual core processes, so there's nothing like a single core dual core thing we're comparing here. And of course they've all got Wi-Fi on the board somehow. Now of course for the Raspberry Pi Pico that means there's a second chip for the Wi-Fi, in fact, it's even got a second process. I think it's a Cortex-M3. For the expressive systems ones, they're all built into that same system on a chip. But the overall uh, is that they've all got Wi-Fi and dual core. So fairly uh, even playing field when it comes to what we're comparing with what here. Now to test it, I use a CPU intensive task. The one I used in a previous video, that's trial by division to test the first million numbers to see which ones are prime. It is worth noting that the Cortex M0 Plus does not have a hardware integer division built into it, though it does have a special piece of circuitry that will do a division in eight clock cycles. Uh, the ESP32 boards actually do have uh, that division in there. The test is surprisingly repeatable in that you can repeat it many, many times and you always get out the same answer within one millisecond. I'm using Arduino 2.0 with the ESP32 and the RP2040 support packages. So it's the same code running on each of the uh, boards, the high level code, of course, the compilers and things come from the different companies and the settings and so on. But we're basically starting with the same point and then building it for each of those different boards. Okay, so this is a graph of the total time that it took to run the test to go through those million prime numbers on both cores. It's a million prime numbers on one core and a million prime numbers on the other core. Of course, I could have done, you know, half a million and half a million or two million, two million, whatever. What I did is I made sure that both boards were loaded up with equal amount of work. And this is the time that it took. And we can see in last place is the Raspberry Pi Pico, just over 20 seconds there. Next comes the uh, ESP32 S3 board, uh, 10 and a half seconds. And then about a second faster is the uh, the ESP32, the, the, the previous generation that I've got here on the Carbon V3. That's a board that's built here in Europe, not built uh, in, in, uh, in China 
Obviously, of course, the, the, the chip comes from China itself, though, but the board and everything is assembled here. And so we can see it's the fastest one in terms of the raw processing power. But it's worth noting that it's running at 240 megahertz. The ESP32 S3 is running at 240 megahertz and the Pico is only running at 133 megahertz. So you can see the difference in the time. Of course, it's not quite double, but you can see the difference there in terms of the clock frequency, uh, 24133. So the Raspberry Pi Pico does run at 133, the other two run at 240. Now we can extrapolate. I've also done some actual testing where I did actually change the clock speeds. Uh, this isn't the perfect measure because other things like accessing the flash or the RAM may be slightly slower at different clock speeds. However, it does give us a very good idea of what would it be like if they all ran at the same one. So I'm now going to say, imagine they were all running at 133 megahertz, just like the Raspberry Pi Pico. And as we see here, we've got the same graph now, but obviously it takes longer for the ESP32 board. Still 20.6 seconds there for the Raspberry Pi Pico, then down 19 seconds for the ESP32 S3, 17 seconds for the ESP32 the previous generation. So still, uh, even when we're running at the clock, same clock speed, it's the same order, with the uh, ESP32 being the fastest of the three. Now it's possible to calculate how much current is being used by the board. I want to emphasize it's the board using Ohm's law and by measuring the voltage drop across a shunt. Now it's only what's measured by the board. Uh, so for example, if we were looking at the Raspberry Pi Pico, if that uh, chip that does the Wi-Fi was activated, it would also be drawing current. Uh, and there are no LEDs on that kind of thing to try to actually get the minimum that we can out the board and see just the CPU usage, uh, dual core CPU usage when we are when we're running this test. And so here we have how many uh, milliamps are being used by the different boards when two cores are running. If you reference my previous videos, you will see that this is more than they were running before. In fact, I'll show you the difference uh, in the next slide. So in third place, we now get the Carbon V3, which has got the ESP32 board on it. So although it's the fastest, although it runs at 240 megahertz and it gets the job done the quickest it uses the most current uh, in dual core mode it also uses the most current in single core mode if you've seen my other videos next down we have the esp32 s3 so an interesting thing to note although the esp32 s3 wasn't faster than the esp32 it's certainly more efficient so here running those two cores, we can see that actually quite a difference in the power efficiency. However, the one that's the most power efficient by a significant margin at 38 up to 76, 38 up to 87, more than double if you go to the ESP32, is the Raspberry Pi Pico running at 133 megahertz. So that uses the least amount of current dual core, both cores running there. So how much extra current is needed by that second core? So I'm referencing my previous testing. And so you need an extra 21 milliamps for the uh, ESP32, only an extra 14 milliamps for the ESP32 S3, and only a three extra milliamps for the Raspberry Pi Pico. So again, a very big difference. And this is repeat, really repeating a pattern that I've shown in my previous videos. And that is that while the ESP32 boards are very capable and very fast, they do use more power. And now here in dual core mode, we can see that adding in that second core really does use uh, more power, 21 milliamps uh, in this case. So if board A takes 38 milliamps, but takes 20 seconds to complete a task, but board B uses 87 milliamps, but only takes nine seconds to complete a task using two cores, which one is the most efficient? So, you know, if you want the job done, but you want it done in the most efficient manner, okay, so you don't mind if it takes longer, but it's gonna use less power, which one do you use? Sometimes getting it done quick, using more power is better because you use lots of power, but you get it done over and done with quickly. Sometimes using less power, but over a longer period of time is better. Which one is actually better, tortoise uh, and the hare? So let's have a look. So in third place, we find the ESP32 board with 1.1 milliwatt hours. So that's a measure of work done. Oh, so that's, that's power over time. So 1.14. Uh, in fact, we're going to have to go down to the second digit here for the ESP32. So though it does the job the quickest, uh, it uses more power to do it. Next, you have the ESP32 S3, which I think has been in the middle of almost every single chart that we've had here. That's using 1.11 milliwatt hours and then the most efficient although it ran slower it will get the same job done uh, in, in, uh, with less power over time with 1.09 for the Raspberry Pi Pico however one thing to note these are all very very close 
this is all very, very close. So in this case, the raw performance, dual core raw performance of the ESP32 gets it done quicker and it's slightly more power hungry to do that. The Pico will really be the most efficient to do that with dual core, but it will take a bit longer. But overall, it will use less, less uh, energy. So what can we conclude from all of this? Well, the ESP32 offers the best raw performance. It gets the job done the quickest. The ESP32 is slightly slower than the ESP32, which is something I spotted in my previous test. A bit surprising, but it's more efficient. And maybe that's the important thing here. It actually does it using less power. Using the second core on the Raspberry Pi 2040 doesn't incur a big pen power penalty. That's really interesting. So if you are thinking of doing two cores and you've got a Raspberry Pi uh, Pico, then you can kick in that extra core and it's not going to really drain the battery or use much more of the power there for you. So overall, the Pico is the most power efficient. However, the ESP32 boards aren't far behind. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains, and I also have a monthly newsletter. Go to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.